my meetings with the founders of HCL, they've reminisced about the beginning of their entrepreneurial startup from a Barsati. Founded in 1976, the young team led by Shivnadar bet big on the nascent Indian IT industry, which has now become a $5 billion global enterprise. And today, I'm going to meet the future of HCL, or at least HCL Corporation, the privately held holding company that houses HCL Technologies and HCL Infosystems. Executive Director and CEO of HCL Corp, Roshni Nadar is back from an MBA program at Kellogg and is taking forward her father's mission to make quality education accessible. <laughs> Roshni's baby, the 500 crore rupee Vidya Gyan Schools project, has kicked off with the gates of the first Vidya Gyan opening in Uttar Pradesh. Is the young Nadar set for her role? It's time to find out. Nashree, thanks for joining us on the show. Let me start by asking you, you know, your profile on the company website says that Roshni brings a global outlook, a strategic vision and a passion for social enterprise and building institutions. You're only in your 20s. Do you actually feel ready for this sort of role and responsibility? Partly yes, partly no. Okay. What's the part you feel ready for? We just rolled out Vidya Gyan on 13th of July, mm. which is mm. our school. And I have literally been involved from beginning till it rolled out. Mm. Now I've given it to the principal and the teachers. Yes. So, you know, they have to see our vision through. It's been so exciting. Mm. And I've actually, in a lot of ways, I've gotten to apply a lot what I've read about or learned about. Mm. So from that perspective, I feel like I'm sort of ready. Mm. And uh, the not so ready part, then I have my parents you know, kind of guiding it and helping me. But as the executive director and CEO of HCL Corp, and once again I come back to the release which says she's responsible for strategic directions of only the HCL Corporation. So that is you know, sort of emphasized in that sense, but it's still the holding company for the two listed entities. I know. It's the holding company, but in terms of strategic decision, you know, come back and one thinks of the investments and one thinks of the portfolio, which in a lot of ways is a family portfolio. Mm. So the strategic direction regarding that and where we want to take it in terms of our education initi initiatives, and I look at that as, let's say, an investment opportunity or other things. So, I mean, at some point, if you come back and if you are going to be involved, uh. then you kind of have to step up. I've been thrown into the ocean uh. and now I have to but, swim. But there was no sort of apprehension that, you know, how are people actually going to respond to this? Were you intimidated yourself by the fact um, that, you know, you're going to come in at this sort of CEO level uh, without having sort of really worked for the company at all? Um, as far as ACL Corporation goes, the only person I was actually working with was my father and, yeah. you know, people in the corporation and I hadn't worked in the operating companies I had any exposure. But that bit I was prepared for, mm. you know, that I would come back and I would get involved with corporation. I mean, the only other contenders for that CEO position was either my mom, my dad, or me. Okay. <laughs> you know, it's a private holding company. Mm. And when we talk about strategic direction and investments, it's truly, um, you know, our family portfolio. Mm. As far as uh, the impact of HCL Corporation goes in directions for the operating company, mm. you know, my father sits on the board mm. of HCL Technologies, and of mm. course he's driving the direction in, mm. in some way mm. for HCL Infosystems, mm. but I am not involved Will you in get involved though? I don't know. It's too premature. Mm. I have a lot to learn, mm. and to be able to be really involved in the operating companies, I think first you have to be a part of the operating companies in some function is that, is that stage two, is that the next sort of level as far as this plan is concerned of getting you into HCL Corp and then gradually sort of you becoming a part of the listed entities as well? I don't think there's any plan right now no? because Vidya Gyan's come, I mean the first Vidya Gyan has come this year, next year is the second one and subsequently every year there's going to be one Vidya Gyan school and they only get further away from Delhi and the Shivnada University. So but you're open to the idea. I'm open, and, but I feel like it will again evolve over my discussions with my but father. But you feel and ready to actually time. be part of 
a lucid entity in that no. sense? Because, no, you no. don't. At no. this point, you don't. I'm very young. I have a lot to learn, so no. When you're growing up and you really don't have to worry about where the money is actually going to come in from, you don't in that sense really have to worry about a job. Um, how do you how do you find your own voice? How do you find your own identity? How do you how do you ensure that you have your own dreams and aspirations and ambitions? Because everything is you know there for you, and it's just a question of going out there and, and taking. I it. know, but it was a blind to university, and I started off as an economics major but you know I, one day I had a chat with my parents and I said you know I don't know if I want to do economics mm. and they said you know what you've gone to an American university the first reason why you were sent there is because of the wide range of options they have mm. so pick what you like and do it mm. but it just then make something of it don't go and waste your time for four years and like communication school of communication and radio television really appealed to me and I did it mm. and I and then I interned at CNBC one yeah, summer I in know. Delhi. Yeah. And then I interned with CNN at American Morning with Paul Azan. And then I work, I was working for, with Sky News in London as a news producer. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was really an invaluable experience. And I was, I was loving it. And you know, but it was, it was just at one point I was sitting with my dad. He came to visit me in London. He said, you know, like, what do you want to do? Do you want to come back to India or, you know, because there is a huge responsibility back home and you know it took me a while I thought about it and I said it is a huge responsibility and I'm kind of privileged to have that platform mm. so I'd like to come back but I don't feel prepared enough mm. and at that point then the discussion of business school came about and in 1996 we had already founded the SSN uh, College of Engineering in Chennai. In Chennai that's right so there was already an arm in education and to me I just felt when I do come back I'll have to learn, I'll have to learn very fast and I mean even without me it's going mm. great mm. and this is my time that if I do after business school if I come back mm. and if you give me a project which I can own, mm. which I can say like my own entrepreneurship kind of mm. project then I feel like my contribution will be a lot more and I'll learn a lot more. So that's Vidya Gyan. So that's Gyan. Vidya Gyan and now Shinada University. You know, you're working now with like a former cabinet secretary, with a former secretary of the government of India and so on and so forth. People who you've probably sort of called <laughs> uncle as you've been growing up and now you're, you're across the boardroom table but sort of taking phenomenal. decisions. Look at the exposure I'm getting yeah. and look at what I'm learning from people at literally an arm's length. I sit across from them in the boardroom but it's really my time to listen and learn. What would you say is your big strength at this point? Because, you know, clearly uh, you've, you've now started on this project and you've actually rolled out one Vidya Gyan school in UP. I believe you have plans to roll out about seven yeah. uh, in the next couple of years. But what was that experience like for it you? It was great. It was one of those experiences that, you know, we had the management board where we have me, we have Mr. T.S.R. Subramaniam, who's government. We have Dr. Kiran Datar, who's from the education field. Gauri Ishwaran, who was former principal of uh, Sanskriti, my mother, me, and we all come from like different mm -hmm. walks of life. And you, you know, we had TSR who helped us with the land and with, you know, MOU with the UP government, and just seeing how it improved my Hindi. <laughs> it has improved my Hindi a lot, yeah. and it will continue to do so. But yeah. just having spent time and see how that is chalked out and how that works. The greatest platform is that. You're starting something new, you kind of have nothing to do. So what you is know? the target that you've now set for yourself as far as, uh, you know, the education initiative is concerned? Because you've got Vidya Gyan, you're talking about the university where you've already acquired land. So what is what are you expecting to happen over the next 12 to 18 months on, on the ground? In the next 18 months, I would imagine that um, the next Vidya Gyan, which we are looking at most probably in uh, Banaras, and as for the Shinnari University, all the plans are in place, architectural plans are in place, the land is acquired by us. That's an exciting project. So I'm hoping by next summer we can at least start off the School of Technology. Mm. But I, in my mind, how we have conceptualized Shinnari University is to be a lot more like an American university, mm. to have a School of Technology, have a School of Communication, yeah. absolutely, have a School of Management, have a School of Arts and Sciences, mm and have a school of education. All right, on that note, it's a good time for us to bring in Shiv Nader. We'll take a quick commercial break and come back and continue our conversation. Roshni Nader and her father, Shiv Nader, the chairman of HCL Group, will join us on India Inc. for Generation Next.